Today we are learning Photoshop interface. The first thing that I'm going to discuss is this document window here in the middle of the screen. The document window contains this canvas region where we will draw, paint or edit our photographs later. This dark grey region is not part of the canvas, it just serves as a contrast to the canvas. Right now the color of the surrounding area is dark grey. It can be changed if you right click and then choose the colors you want. You can also set your own custom color. But for now I'll leave it to default. Each document contains a document tab here on the top left. It gives us the name of the document which is in this case interface and the magnification of the document which is right now 100%. So if I zoom it to 200% it will show the magnification to be 200% in the document tab. Let me go back to 100%. Other than that it gives us the color mode of the document which is RGB in this case and the bit depth of the document which is 16 bits right now. If you make any changes in the document, let's say adding a new color like this and then don't save the document, an asterisk will appear in the document tab. This asterisk will go away when we save the document again. To save the document, we'll go to I and then save. We can see that the asterisk is gone. You can have more than one document open at the same time, so let me create some more documents to demonstrate it. To help you distinguish the documents, let me mark it with a color, let's say green. Then we create the other document. Let's mark it with blue. You can switch between the documents by clicking on their respective tabs. So let's click on the first document tab which is interface. Similarly we can access the other two new documents by clicking their tabs. So this is the green one and this is the blue one. We can also change the order of the document by dragging their tabs. The documents are now rearranged, so this is first, this is second, and the interface is last. Let me delete the two new documents. Next I'm going to talk about the toolbar on the left. The toolbar contains all the tools that are required for painting or editing. This is the move tool, brush tool fill tool etc if you don't know the name of any tool hover on a tool a tool tip will appear giving you the name of the tool its shortcut and a brief tutorial about the tool so this is the brush tool with the shortcut p and this is a brief tutorial about what you can do with the brush tool if you find it difficult to work with the single columned toolbar you can always expand it by clicking these double arrows and have two columned toolbar you can collapse it by clicking the double arrows again. The tools in the toolbar come in stacks. They have a down arrow beside them. Almost all of them have it. To access the related tools, you right click on the tool and then choose the tools you want. You can also add or remove tools from the toolbar. To do that, Right click on these three dots and then left click edit toolbar. This dialog box will appear. Let's say you don't want the move tool in the toolbar. You simply track the move tool from the toolbar to the extra tools. You can see that the move tool is removed from the toolbar. Now if you want the move tool back you can drag it from the extra tools to the toolbar. Now you can see that the move tool has reappeared in the toolbar but it has not stacked up with the tool below. So in order to do that, we'll have to track the move tool on top of this artboard tool. So you can see that the two tools are in stack right now. I'll click done. 
This is the information bar. This gives us the magnification at which we are viewing the document right now, quite the same as the document tab here. But in addition to that, here we can put in a number and can change the magnification, say 50. Now we are viewing the canvas at a magnification of 50%. Let's bring it back to 100. Next, it gives us the dimension of the document, which for this document is 1280 pixels by 720 pixels with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. You may want to view other informations as well, which you can do by clicking on this arrow and then choosing any of these options. For now, I'll choose the account. It says that the document has three layers. So let's check in the layers panel. There are indeed three layers in the layers panel. One, two and three so the document has three layers the layer count is three next is the panel section on the right side of the screen the panel section contains various controls and options it contains the layers panel the channels panel parts panel swatches panel library properties etc these are by no means the full range of panels available in Photoshop. You can access more panels by going to Window and then choose any of the panels from the list. This vertical strip is also part of the panel section. This is just a different visual representation. For example, this is the character panel, this is the brushes panel, etc. This is the option bar. The option bar contains options for the tool that is currently selected in the toolbar. For example, right now the brush tool is selected, so the option bar shows options for the brush tool. That's uh, opacity, flow, smoothing. But if we select the move tool, it will show options for the move tool. Next, I'm going to talk about uh, workspace. Workspace is the way the Photoshop interface is displayed with the panel section, then the toolbar or the menus, etc. You can access Workspace by going to Window, then Workspace and then choosing any Workspace from the list. Like right now I'm in the Essentials Workspace with the check mark beside it, but you can choose any Workspace you want according to your need. Let's say you want to paint, Photoshop has created the painting workspace to suit the needs of a painting session. So when I click painting, you will see that the Photoshop interface will change. You will need swatches, you will need brushes and all that stuff. So Photoshop has created a workspace for you for painting. At any point, you may mess up your current workspace. For now, this is the painting workspace. Let's say you get rid of the navigator panel brushes panel the workspace is quite ruffled up you can get back to your default workspace by going to window workspace and then reset painting workspace the painting workspace is now reset to its default state you can also create your own workspace let's say you don't need this watches panel so let's get rid of it you may also want a new panel, so to get that, we go to window and then choose any panel from the list. I'll choose the color panel. The color panel appears in the panel section here. And then in order to save this workspace, you'll have to go to window, workspace, and then new workspace. Then you give it a name, I'll name it uh, sample. You may also want to save the keyboard shortcuts, menus and toolbars by clicking the checkboxes and then click save. So now if I am in a different workspace, let's say essentials, I can easily go back to the workspace I just created by going to window, workspace and then sample workspace. I almost forgot to mention the menu bar. This is the menu bar on the top of the screen. The menu bar contains menus like the file menu, edit menu, image menu, etc. Each menu contains commands like the file menu contains create a new document command, open an existing document command, close command, save as command, etc. Next, I'm going to talk about the flexibility of the Photoshop interface. 
Almost all the elements in Photoshop can dock, undock and float. Let me demonstrate. As I've already mentioned, you can expand and collapse the toolbar and in addition to that you can have it float in the middle of the screen too. But this is not favorable for me. You may find it useful to have it float anywhere on the screen. I'll dock it back to its place. You will see this blue line which is when you release it. It is docked now. Similarly, you can expand and collapse the panel section. You can also drag the whole thing out and have it float in the middle of the document. But I don't prefer this, I'll dock it back, I'll wait for the blue line and then release it. You can also drag out the individual tabs if you want, like the colors tab is out, then the brushes tab. You can also drag out any of the tabs from this column, let's say the brush settings tab. You can dock them back to their places as well. You can also drag the tabs between this broad region and this vertical strip. Say you want the navigator to be here, you can do that by dragging it. And let's say you want the tool presets to be here, you can drag it as well. If you think that your workspace is too messed up, you can always go to Window, Workspace and then reset your sample workspace. It will be good as new. You can even drag out the document tab and have it float or dock it back again. So you can drag it out and have it float or you can dock it back again. When the blue square appears, you release it. So this is all I have for today. This was just a basic tutorial and beginner's guide to Photoshop interface. Hope to see you in my other videos. Bye.